Welcome to Weekend Design. If you want to update the look of your tree this season, but you're on a tight budget, try making your own ornaments. Here's local artist Emily Warford Ivy to show us how to make salt dough ornaments. And yes, she just happens to be my sister. The materials you'll need are just one cup of iodized or table salt, basic all-purpose flour. I just got the very generic purpose flour from the store, and three quarters of a cup of water. And you just mix that up to have the dough. And then for decorating, you just need acrylic paint and some paint brushes. You can get them in even these little apple barrel tiny bottles. And those are also really good. But this is actually a model car paint kit. These already have the varnish inside of them, so when you paint your Christmas ornament, it'll come out nice and shiny without having to use any additional varnish or gloss, um, which is what we have over here to go on top of our um, acrylic painted ones so that the, they last a lot longer. They'll last from Christmas to Christmas. Um, and you got the ends are great for making indentations and little cups and shapes. And we've got pencils and all kinds of tools that we can use to make our ornament. Well, first you just mix your salt and your flour and your water all together in a bowl, and you mix it together until it forms a, a really thick ball, just like a ball of cooking dough. Just two even dry cups. You don't have to be too specific. There we go. Um, you're going to need a cup of table salt, and we just fill this up to the top. You can use kosher salt. It actually gives you a bit of a chunkier clay. You can't make as many detailed um, characters as you can, but it actually makes a good chunky kind of um, flour. And then we just need to fill up our measuring cup with three quarters of a cup of water. And then you just mix it all together in one bowl. And it might take a minute, but eventually you'll get this nice round ball of dough. You can also add food coloring at this point or you can split it into different bowls and add food coloring. And they won't be as vibrant of colors as if you went ahead and painted it afterwards, but it's still, it's still fun for them and it's got the color in it. And you just knead it and mash it all together. And if it's too dry, then just add a couple of sprinkles of water until you get, until you get it to all stick together. But it's not sticking to your bowl. All right, and then we take it over to our placemat, and we make our characters, so we cut our, our shapes. For the little ones in your family, it's really easy to use the cookie cutters. For the little ones that are getting a little bit more creative, sometimes hand molding is the way to go. It's a lot easier to pull away the extra dough than to pull out your cookie cutter. That's about a quarter of an inch thick right there. That will make sure that it bakes all the way through in your oven. And, you know, if in doubt, just bake it longer. He was kind of a thick face. If you build up on their face too much, you need to bake them a little bit longer. And then we put it on a foil-lined cooking sheet so that they don't stick. Um, if you have cooking parchment, that's also good. Wax paper you can put it to line your cookie sheet with so that uh, they don't get stuck. Woof, woof. You don't want to spray these with any kind of cooking spray or anything because we're not trying to cook them. If you want, you can go ahead and bake your Christmas ornament hook right into your ornament so that you can go ahead and bypass having to make a hole in the top of your shape. These are just wire, uh, plastic covered wire Christmas hooks, but any kind of Christmas hook will do. The plain metal ones are perfect. You can even do this with a, an old paper clip. If you do this number, sometimes it goes shoop. Right out of your ornament. So keep it bent is a good rule of thumb. <laughs> and another good tip, um, if, you're, if you're going to add things on top of your ornament, it's good to take a little paintbrush with a little bit of water. And you just kind of go around the edges there. And that will make sure that it all melts together in the oven. And it will look as if it was one piece of dough instead of a bunch of pieces stuck on there. And you can always transfer them to the cookie sheet and then do your decorating. Just press down real nice and firm and give it a little swirl and that leaves you a nice hole for your ribbon or your string. So we're going to have our oven preheated to 250 degrees and then we're just going to slide these in on the bottom rack of the oven and bake them for two hours. And if you make them really um, really cook them well and bake them all the way through, there's a good chance they could last you for many, many years down the road. Um, so we're going to let those bake, and then we're going to pull them out, and as soon as they cool off, you can paint. And as long as they don't bounce back to your fingers, then they're cooked all the way through. 
here's some ones that are in the process of being painted and have been painted. Like I said, it's always fun to have your mom on your Christmas tree, or or maybe your fancy sister. And then everybody can be around even when they're not there for Christmas. And this is just a fun way to add to your Christmas ornaments without having to go to the store and buy something that's probably not going to fit your theme next year. Or, you know, you can never find a dog Christmas ornament at the store that looks like your dog. So I thought, you know, it'd be a fun way for us to make our own dogs or their family dog. It's not a Christmas tree without Biggie. Or, you know, you can make your sister or a snowman. And it's great for every, everybody can get into it and make their own thing. And you can get as detailed or you can keep it as simple as you want. You can make it with cookie cutters or you can make everything by hand or cut it out with a knife. It, it really teaches its own. So now we have our boot. It is nice and dry. And we are going to put a hook in this one because this is one of the ones that we made a hole with. Just to bend it around. And these are great because you can even... Pull them out and fix them a little bit. And now, in order to keep it nice and glossy and keeping from year to year, we're going to spray it with some of our clear gloss. Six inches away, six inches to a foot away, little spurts. For two cups of flour and a cup of salt, it's probably 30 cents for all of that. And then water you should be able to get for free. So it's really cheap and easy. Just spray the back. Haven't you ever wanted to spray your sister in the face with some spray paint? Gonna dry, and I'm gonna hang her on my tree and look at her every year. Thanks, Emily. I think. For more weekend design, continue to check Jacksonville.com. For Jacksonville.com, I'm Amanda Warford.